Every day, we're faced with countless decisions. From the moment we wake up, we make choices regarding our immediate needs to choices whose outcome will only be known far in the future. To do this, our brains combine information from the external world with signals about our internal state, like whether we're tired or hungry. However, it turns out that our brains can combine these different streams of information using two different strategies known as habitual and goal-directed decision-making. To illustrate how these strategies work, imagine checking out at the grocery store and finding two lanes that are open. How might you choose between them? One strategy would be to rely on your past experience of shorter lines being faster to pick the lane with the fewest people in it. This is an example of habitual decision-making, which is retrospective, driven by repeating choices that were rewarded in the past. These types of decisions are very fast and simple, but they're also prone to errors. Another strategy would be instead to estimate how fast each lane will move based on the number of items that each person has in line, which might even lead you instead to choose the longer line. This is an example of goal-directed decision-making, which is prospective, using knowledge about the current environment to predict which action you take now is going to have the biggest payoff in the future. These decisions are often more accurate, but they also take longer and are more cognitively demanding for the brain to compute. So given these trade-offs, we need to strike a balance between decision-making strategies throughout life. And we oftentimes take for granted how effortlessly our brains can make these decisions and update our choices in a constantly changing world. That is, of course, until our capacity for such cognitive flexibility begins to decline. For many, the balance between decision-making strategies is lost with age, resulting in decisions that are overly reliant on habits, while others show a remarkable retention of the cognitive flexibility needed to switch between habitual and goal-directed decision-making even into advanced age. And these differences in cognitive aging raise an important question. What are the key brain regions that promote susceptibility or resilience to cognitive decline? The focus of my work is aimed at addressing this question to uncover the mechanisms of cognitive decline and identify novel approaches for preserving decision-making throughout life. And with our population living longer than ever before, we all hope to stave off the effects of aging and prolong our cognitive health for as long as possible. And so to understand how aging in the brain contributes to an over-reliance on habitual decisions later in life, I'm investigating two brain regions known to be critical for making these decisions, the cortex and the striatum. Together, the cortex and the striatum are thought to form distinct pathways, or what we call circuits, that underlie habitual and goal-directed decision-making. However, given how broadly distributed these circuits are throughout the brain, it's been difficult to study their role in decision-making, and their vulnerability in the aging brain has yet to be determined. Using several cutting edge techniques, I'm studying these decision-making circuits across aging to understand how changes in both their structure and function drive age-related changes in behavior. And since these questions are less feasible to address in humans, I use mice to study these age-related changes in decision-making. I start by training mice of different ages to make choices between two options that have different probabilities of delivering reward. I then periodically change these probabilities to see how quickly and efficiently they adapt in this changing environment. On this task, like humans, I found that older mice show an over-reliance on habitual decisions, in addition to several other hallmarks of aging that we see in humans. And so to understand how changes in the brain might drive stronger habitual decision-making with age, I measure the strength of the connection between cells in the cortex and the striatum throughout life. By injecting engineered viruses into the brain, I can trace the connections between these cells to understand how these connections change with age. Additionally, by measuring and manipulating these cells while mice make decisions, I can determine which cells are causally responsible for driving different decision-making strategies. 
In these experiments, I use another set of viruses that allow me to record and even manipulate cells in the brain using only light. For example, I can shine light into the brains of mice to control the activity of their cells, turning them on or off, with the aim of restoring goal-directed decision-making in older animals. Together, my hope is that this work will transform our understanding of how decisions are formed throughout life, allowing us to potentially uncover novel mechanisms for cognitive resilience. In addition, aging is the single greatest risk factor for developing neurodegenerative diseases. Having studied Parkinson's disease, I know firsthand the profound impact neurodegeneration can have on the brain. But by first understanding healthy aging, we may learn important lessons for treating age-related neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease.